So hello everyone, welcome to another new video today. Now I am sure that you have come to the video after watching the thumbnail, right? What was there in the thumbnail? That finding the missing element and that too using binary search. You might be thinking that how it can be done actually, right? Because we have applied binary search to find a given target element. But here I am saying that we are going to find a missing element using binary search. It's confusing, right? So now let's have a look here, okay? So now, what is what is the problem statement actually? You will find this problem statement on lit code and that will be in the premium mode. You will also find this on gigs for gigs, okay? You can find it there. So what is the problem? You will be given a set of numbers, let's say from 1 to n, okay? You will be given some numbers from 1 to n in a proper sorted way, okay? In IRA. But what is the issue there? You will be given only n minus 1 numbers. Let's say if I say that you are given 1 to n and the value for n is here equal to 10. So 1 to n, it, it becomes total 10 numbers. But in the array, you will have only 9 numbers. Now it is clear that there is one missing element, right? So now how are we going to find out that missing element? So now let's have a look here. We have an array here, okay? We have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Which is the missing number? It is clearly visible that the missing number is 5 here. Now, why are we using binary search? Because you all know it takes log n time complexity. There are different methods also. Number one, just, uh, just search the element using linear search. That will be taking O of n. Second method, find the sum of all the numbers from 1 to n. Okay, 1 to n natural numbers. After finding the sum, keep on subtracting all the numbers. Uh, the sum of all the numbers from 1 to 9, it is equal to 45. If I if I subtract all the numbers here, then I will get the result there as 5, okay? Then another method, uh, the third one will be XOR. Find out the XOR of all the numbers from 1 to 9 and then repeat the same thing for all these elements from that value, whatever you get after doing the XOR of all the numbers from 1 to 9. You will definitely get there as 5 because 5 will be missing there, 5 will be occurring there only once. Now all these three different methods, they will be taking time complexity as O of n, but, uh, but if we are using here binary search, then in that case, it will be taking log of n. We all know that, right? So here, what is the logic here? How are we going to find it out? So can you see all the numbers from 1 to 4 that we have here and their indexes, they have a difference of 1. 1 minus 0, 1, 2 minus 1, 1, 3 minus 2, 1, 4 minus 3, 1. But the other side, after 5, where 5 would be missing there, after that if I see here, everywhere there is a difference of 2. 6 minus 4, 2, 7 minus 5, 2, 6, 8 minus 6, 2 and 9 minus 7, 2. So here is the logic. How are we going to find it out, okay? So here, now let's try to implement it. How are we going to find it out? So how do we uh, how do we implement binary search? We have the start index, which is equal to zero, and we have the end index here, which is equal to how much here? We have the end index here, which will be equal to seven. Now what are we going to do every time? Find out the mid index. We have the mid index, and we will also have an answer variable which will be storing the index where. 5 is missing from, okay? So here we have answer, which is by default I have taken here is minus 1, okay? Now, if I find out the mid, what will be the mid here? 0 plus 7 by 2, it comes here as 3. So, what is the value and what is the actual logic here? If I check all these numbers, so wherever I have a difference of 1, it is clear that the number the missing number it will be on the right side and wherever we have the difference as 2 the missing number will be on the left side so here i have found out the mid index is 3 if i check here at mid index is 3 so now at the mid index the value and the index what is the difference the difference here is minus 1 so we have to go on the right side what we do start becomes mid plus 1 so start here changes to 4 here then find out the mid again. What will be the new mid? 4 plus 7 by 2. 11 by 2, we get the value here as 5. Done. So here, at the mid index 5, what is the value? 7. 
7 minus 5, the value minus the index, is that difference equal to 1? No, it is not. So now, what is the difference there? The difference is equal to 2, it is not equal to 1. So in that case, that particular index, that index 5, it can be a possible solution. How it can be a possible solution? Suppose, if I have the value as 5, then which is the number missing? 6. Where 6 would have been, if, if it was there in that array, it would have been at the index 5. But, which is the missing number right now, in our case, it is 6. So, that can be a possible solution and that may not be. So, here we will be storing the index here as 5, the mid index. Done. We have stored here as 5. Now, whenever we are finding out and we get a particular value, then it is clear that the missing number will be on the left side. So, go on the left side and changes to 5 minus 1 equal to 4. Done. So, start is 4, end is 4, the new mid will be 4. This one changes to 4. Check at the index 4. The value and the index, they have a difference of not equal to 1. So, here again, the answer is going to change as equal to 4. Done. And it was the actual solution, right? It was the actual solution. At the index 4, the number 5 would have been there. But it is not there. So, which is the missing number? The missing number here is 5. So, now again, that also cannot be a possible solution. So, again, we have to go on the left side. This time, and changes to mid minus 1. It becomes here as 3. So, now what is the most important condition in a binary search? The start should be always less than equal to n. Is it satisfying here? No, it is not satisfying here. So, here we are going to return the index. There is 4. So, if the index is 4, then which is the missing element? The missing element will be answer plus 1 every time. That's it. Okay. Now, suppose if I have all the numbers and here the number 1 is missing here. So, now here in this case, uh, which is that missing number? The number is 1. Right? 1 is not there. So, here also it will be working perfect in this case. It will give us the result as the missing element is 1 itself. Now, what if I talk about the other condition? What if I have all the numbers and the last one I don't have? So, here we have all the numbers. Continuous all the numbers, right? So, here the missing number, if it is not starting from 1, then it will be 1. And if it is starting from 1 and we have continuous all the numbers, each and every value and in the index has a difference of 1, then it is the last number, the new number which is not there. Okay. So, in that case, the program that we are going to write, it will be returning the index as minus 1, which will be already stored in that answer variable. Because what will be the main condition here? The main condition here will be if the difference is not equal to minus 1. Right. So, here we don't have any such element for which the value and the index don't have a difference not equal to 1. Okay. So, here only in that case, we will just write block if the answer at the very last, at the very last, after performing the entire thing, if you find out the answer index, is it still equal to minus 1, then in that case, whatever be the size, whatever be the value of n, whatever be the size of n, it will be replaced as n plus 1 will be the new value. So now, let's look at the program, how is it going to work here, okay. So here is the program that we have. In this program, I have the main and inside the main, I have the array. And in the array, I have the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8 and 9. The same which I took as the example. I have the integer size here as 8. And here I am printing the value miss missing element is. And whatever be the missing element, this find missing element function it is going to return. Okay. So now let's look at the code here, the implementation. As we implement the binary search every time, we need the start index equal to 0. Done. We need the end index equal to n minus 1. Done. Here we find out the mid index which is equal to start plus n minus star divided by 2 and then I have an answer variable which will be storing the value here as minus 1. Then the most basic and most important condition while start is less than equal to n and as we were discussing about finding the difference of the value and the index. So here at the mid index I have this statement here int difference equal to the difference between the mid value and its index. Then, if the difference is equal to 1, then it was clear that we have to go on the right side. So, go on the right side. How? 
start equal to min plus 1. Next, if it is not, the value is not equal to 1, then what we had to do? We have to go on the left side. And before that, we have to store that particular index in the answer variable. So, in the answer variable, I am storing that index mid. And then, we are moving on the left side. Because it is not a guarantee that we are going to find out the missing element at that particular position. So, we have to go on the left side as n equal to mid minus 1. Done. Then, every time at every iteration, we have to keep on finding the mid index. Clear. Now, here, as I was saying that there might be a problem where we have all the numbers from 1 to n minus 1. The missing number is that particular n. So, how are we going to find it out? In that case, this entire program, this entire program, this entire code, is, it is going to return as minus 1. Answer variable will be still storing the value as minus 1. It won't be coming inside this else block at any point of time. So, what will be the condition? If the answer variable plus 1 is equal to 0 or directly right here is, if answer variable is equal to minus 1, then in that case, the last element is the missing number, right? So, we are returning here as n plus 1. n be the size of the array and then return there as minus 1. Done. And if it is not that case, then in that case, we simply return here as answer plus 1. Answer is that particular index where the missing number should have been, but it is not there. So, this is it. Now, let's execute the program and see how it works, okay? So, here it is giving us the perfect result as missing element is 5. Now, let's try changing some other values, okay? So, here I have removed the number 1 here. If I have removed the number 1, I have given the number 5. In this case, it is giving us the result as missing element is 1. So, now I have removed the element 2 here. It is giving us the result as missing element is 2. So, now just have a look here. I have commented these two lines where we were finding where it was the condition for the last element, right? Where it was the condition for the last element. Now, if I give some other input, let's say I have all the numbers, but I have removed 8 here. So, now also it will be giving us the result. There won't be any problem here right now. It is giving us the result here as missing element is 8. Now, if I remove 9 from there, if I have all the numbers from 1 to 8 in this array, So now look here, it is giving us the result as missing element is 0. Okay, we know that the problem statement, it was stated as it is going to start from 1. Okay, so in that case, the last element would have been the answer there. But it is giving us the result here as 0. Why is it giving us a 0? Because what are we returning from this function? Answer plus 1. By default, what was the value in the in the answer variable? It was storing there as minus 1. So, minus 1 plus 1, it becomes 0. So, it is giving us the result as 0. So, now let's go back to the code and uncomment those two lines which was implemented for the last element 9 over there. So, now here I have uncommented these two lines. I executed the program and now it is giving us the proper result as missing element is 9. So, this is it for today. If you have liked our video, please press the like button because that gives us a motivation every time to record a new video. And if you have any doubts, you can definitely give us a comment in the comment section and we will get back to you. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, then please go and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we upload a interesting video like this. Okay, stay tuned and keep learning.